ಶ್ರೀಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೇದ್ಯಂಕರ ವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿ ನಾವಧಿ ತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿದ್ವಿಷಾ ವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಸಹಸ್ರಶೀರಶಂ ದೇವಂ ವಿಶ್ವಾಕ್ಷಂ ವಿಶ್ವಶಂಭುವ ವಿಶ್ವನಾರಾಯಣಂ ದೇವಮಕ್ಷರಂ ಪರಮಂ ಪದಂ ವಿಶ್ವತಃ ಪರಮಾನ್ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ವಿಶ್ವನಾರಾಯಣ ಹರಿ ವಿಶ್ವೇ ವೇದ ಪುರುಷಸ್ತದ್ವಿಶ್ವಮುಪಜೀವತಿ ಪತಿ ವಿಶ್ವಸ್ಯಾತ್ಮೇಶ್ವರ ಗುಂ ಶಾಶ್ವತ ಗುಂ ಶಿವಮಚ್ಯುತ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಮಹಾಜ್ಞೇಯ ವಿಶ್ವಾತ್ಮನ ಪರಾಯಣ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಪರೋ ಜ್ಯೋತಿರಾತ್ಮ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಪರ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತತ್ವನಾರಾಯಣ ಪರ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಪರೋ ಧ್ಯಾತ ಧ್ಯಾನನಾರಾಯಣ ಪರ ಯಚಿಂಚಿಜಗತ್ಸರ್ವೃಶ್ಯತೆ ಶ್ರೂಯತೆ ಪಿವಾ ಅಂತರ್ಬಿಶ್ಚ ತತ್ಸರ್ವ ವ್ಯಾಪ್ಯ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಸ್ಥಿತ ಅನಂತಮ್ಯಯಂ ಕವಿಗುಂ ಸಮುದ್ರೇಂತ ವಿಶ್ವಶಂಭುವ ಪದ್ಮಕೋಶ ಪ್ರತೀಕಾಶಗುಂ ಹೃದಯ ಚಾಪ್ಯಧೋ ಮುಖಂ ಅಧೋ ನಿಷ್ಟ್ಯಾಸ್ತ್ಯಾಂತೇನಾಭ್ಯಾಮುಪರಿತಿಷ್ಠತಿ ಜ್ವಾಲಮಾಲಾಕುಲಂ ಭಾತಿ ವಿಶ್ವಸ್ಯಾಯತನ ಮಹತ್ ಸಂತತ ಗುಂ ಶಿಲಾಭಿಸ್ತುಲಂಬತ್ಯಾಕೋಶ ಸನ್ನಿಭಂ ತಸ್ಯಾಂತೆ ಸುಶಿರಗುಂ ಸೂಕ್ಷ್ಮನ್ ತಸ್ಮಿನ್ ಸರ್ವ ಪ್ರತಿಷ್ಠಿ ತಸ್ಯೇ ಮಹಾನಗ್ನಿರ್ವಿಶ್ವಾರ್ಚಿರ್ವಿಶ್ವತೋ ಮುಖ ಸೋಗ್ರ ಭುಗ್ವಿಭಜಂತಿಷ್ಠನ್ನಾಹಾರಮಜರ ಕವಿ ತಿರ್ಯಗೋರ್ಧ್ವಮಧಶ್ಯಸ್ತಸ್ಯ ಸಂತತ ಸಂತಾಪಯತಿ ಸ್ವಂದೇಹಮಾಪಾದತಲಮಸ್ತಕ ತಸ್ಯೇವನ್ಹಿ ಶಿಖಾ ಅಣೀಯೋ ಓರ್ಧ್ವಾವ್ಯವಸ್ಥಿ ನೀಲತೋ ಯದ ಮಧ್ಯಸ್ಥ ವಿದ್ಯುಲ್ಲೇಖೇವ ಭಾಸ್ವರ ನೀವಾರಶೂಕವತ್ತನ್ವೀ ಪೀತಾಭಾಸ್ವತ್ಯಣೂಪಮ ತಸ್ಯಾಶಿಖಾಯ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ವ್ಯವಸ್ಥಿ ಸ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸ ಶಿವ ಸ ಹರಿಸ್ತೇಂದ್ರ ಸೋಕ್ಷರ ಪರಮಸ್ವರಾಟ್ ಋತಗುಂ ಸತ್ಯಂ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಪುರುಷಂ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಿಂಗಲಂ ಊರ್ಧ್ವರೇತ ವಿಕ್ಷ ವಿಶ್ವಾಯ ವೈ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ನಾರಾಯಣಾಯ ವಿಮಹೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ತನ್ನೋ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪ್ರಚೋದಯಾತ್ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ತತ್ಸತ್ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣಾರ್ಪಣಮಸ್ತು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಉಮಾಜಿ ಸೆಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ರೈಟ್ ನೋಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಆರ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಆಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಆಲ್ ಆರ್ ಪ್ರಣಾಮ್ಸ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ದ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಅಖಂಡ ಮಂಡಲಾಕಾರ ವ್ಯಾಪ್ತ ಚರಾಚರ ತತ್ಪದ ದರ್ಶಿ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮ ಹರಿ ಓ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಐಂಡಿಟ್ ವೆರಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಟು ಸಿ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ವನ್ಸ್ ಅಗೈನ್ on this tatpadam satsang this as you know every month we have two classes one on dedicated disciples that is second sunday and another on the fourth sunday for seekers of god reflections on reading of the book so today we are having dedicated disciples we have been conducted this class for some time and uh, recently 
when I was in Chennai, one old lady came and she met me. She said, I was so happy to hear you speak on Rani Rashmani. She was very satisfied with that. I was very happy to hear her words. So today we heard the chanting of Narayana Suktam by Bangalore Uma. The chanting was so beautiful. You know, the diction of the Sanskrit words were exactly sitting on the, the layer. So I was very happy. Narayana, the name is glorified. Narayana Sutam says about Narayana. SP, you have raised your hand by mistake or would you like to ask anything? If you have done by mistake, then withdraw that hand. So Narayana is the subject matter of the Narayana Sutta. We do not know how the things are coincide so beautifully, you see. Because uh, Narayana Sutta is to be chanted and then I am going to start my speech with Narayana and how it has coincided so well. Because just imagine a day in Dakshineswar when Sri Ramakrishna was there. He was sitting in the room. His door was little closed. That means it has little way up, small uh, cleavage is there in the door. That's all that you can see. So two people or three people are standing outside and they were thinking whether to enter or not. Because the, you know, normal circumstances, we Indians, we don't care for knocking the door, etc. But these are all Western education system has come into them, the new Calcutta youth. So when they come, they see, should they enter the room? So they wanted to knock it. And then so they knocked. At that time, the door was opened by Sri Ramakrishna himself. The moment he opened the door, he looked at that person and greeted him as Narayana. Come, come, Narayana, come inside, he said. And that was Ramchandra Tatta, whose life we would like to study today. It's a very important life among the dedicated disciples. Ramchandra Tatta is known uh, to all the Ramakrishna devotees very much. Why he was known? Because he was the first to publish the life story or the biography of Sri Ramakrishna. Nobody even had thought about that. He was the first person to bring out a book in Bengali, The Life of Sri Ramakrishna. And not only that, other first also he had. You know, he was the first to build a temple for the relics of Sri Ramakrishna. Nobody even had thought at that time. The relics can be worshipped. So he kept the relics and he built a temple for the relics. So, and then he was the first to name the Ramakrishna, by, after Ramakrishna, several things in his house. There was a beautiful mango tree was there. And the mangoes are very delicious. Whatever name it had earlier, he called, he used to call it as a Ramakrishna, Ramakrishna mango. So the mango was named as a Ramakrishna. So a person who has been thinking of Ramakrishna, not only during his meditation time, but also in everything that he sees around, he walks around, he moves around, he has activities, everything he has seen, Sri Ramakrishna. And that person today has entered Sri Ramakrishna's room and Ramakrishna is welcoming him as Narayana. And that he was so much enamored of Sri Ramakrishna's chief. At that time when he came to Sri Ramakrishna, he was almost bordering to atheism. You know the difference between atheist and an agnostic. An agnostic doubts the existence of God. An atheist denies the existence of God. He doesn't have any doubt. An atheist will say, there is no God, that's all. Why you are doing all this worship, etc.? Not required. Don't worship. This is, there is no God at all. But an agnostic is 
wondering whether there is a God or not. God may be there, but I have not realized God. I have not seen God. So why should I believe in what I have not seen? That is the question the agnostics claim. So he was the border to atheism at that time. There was no God, nothing, because he was, Ramchandra Dutta was a English educated person. What was his education? He wanted to become a doctor and he studied in a medical college and he became a doctor. But he was so much, his main subject was chemistry. So much that he had a good knowledge about chemistry. The British government appointed him as a lecturer in a medical college to teach the military students. And that's how he entered the medical field. And then he was very, very happy by teaching medicine. With that medicine, naturally, the thought that became very, very interesting, he started inquiring, what is this word, who I am, etc., etc., he started thinking. At that time, he used to tell the youngsters who came to him, don't look for God, etc., there is no God. If there is God, can there be so much of calamities in this world, is his question. Who will answer that question? Nobody had any answer to his questions. So naturally, his belief in the system, his belief system got strengthened by this until he came in touch with Sri Ramakrishna. It was Sri Ramakrishna who clarified all his doubts and he cleared. You know, Sashi Maharaj used to tell, when, where I used to go to Dakshineswar, before that, I used to write down certain questions in my mind and then keep the questions in my mind and I would ask Sri Ramakrishna. But when I entered his room, I found some 20, 30 people are sitting there. I can't raise any question. There are big, big, the elderly people are sitting. I am a young boy, so I, what I can ask? Like that I will be sitting. But Sri Ramakrishna, the moment he cites me, he will start explaining, he will come to some subject as if answering my questions only. So that is the beauty of Sri Ramakrishna's mind reading. He could read the thoughts of other persons and he could tell them. So we find that, that you see, in a person who is, who is omniscient, omniscient means knowing all, knowing everything. That person, for him it is very easy to understand what is happening in your mind. When Swami Atmasthananji used to tell me, Hey, you are going to meet your Gurudev today. I said, yes, Maharaj. Today evening, there is a pronoun, time is given. We are all Brahmacharis, you know, in the training center. So by line, you should go. About 30, 40 boys, you will go there and make pronoun to our Gurudev. And you will be sitting in the sofa, just blessing us. At that time, you say, oh, today is the pronoun is there. Then mind you, keep your mind very clean, because your Guru can read everything, he says. So you would warn us go there with a clean minded let's say so a person who is omniscient can know everything and when you go there to him and you don't need to ask any questions without asking questions he can answer you and that's what happened to ram when ram Dutta used to come to sri ramakrishna sri ramakrishna would take up some subject and discuss and uh, yam has written in the gospel about those things we find that so he would be simply what is, how does he, how does he uh, explain the things that you think in your home and then when you come to Sri Ramakrishna and he is talking about that. So like that, he had a beautiful experience after coming to Sri Ramakrishna for a few days and then one day he had a dream. You know, we sometimes uh, push off the dreams as nothing but uh, nothing significant, etc. But there are divine dreams of that. When the divine dreams come, you actually know what is happening. So the divine dream he had, what was the divine dream he had? That is wonderful it is. One day he had uh, just uh, laid down for his sleep and then he had slept at that time. He had a dream that he saw Sri Ramakrishna moving around near a pond. And uh, Ramdatta went near him. And Sri Ramakrishna made him sit before him and gave him a mantra to him. And do japa this mantra 108 times 
twice a day, something like that, some instructions he gave. And Ramchandra Dutta was started following that. So, but he never told Sri Ramakrishna that I had a dream of you, you came in my dream and gave me a mantra, nothing he said. Just it was going on, the thing was going on, and he said, so let me, let me see what Sri Ramakrishna uh, knows or not. He wanted to test also. So he never explained to him that he had a dream. So this went on, went on, went on. One what day, what happens? Sri Ramakrishna was a little harsh in talking to him one day. So he didn't understand why Sri Ramakrishna was full of love. And today he is talking to me a little harshly. So what is the matter? So he says that, sir, sometimes the doubts comes in my mind and doubts are called a terrible disease. They are disease, you know, they are called Rakshasa. Some say a Rakshasa. Swami Vivekananda explains in his song on Sri Ramakrishna, the Samshayam is a Rakshasa. To defeat that Rakshasa, to remove the Rakshasa from your mind is very difficult. So that type of doubts when they come, that either God is there or not, whether Sri Ramakrishna is a spiritual person or not, such doubts crosses his mind. So in Christian uh, mysticism, they call it the dark night of the soul. Many of the Christian mystics, I'm not talking about the Christian religion as such, the, those people who are eager to have the divine form of Jesus Christ, they are called Christian mystics. These mystics are like our rishis. They are also, our rishis also were like that. They wanted to have darshan of God. So these mystics, the mystics are there in every religion you will find. So they call it dark night of the soul. That means the doubts come and then assail the mind and the mind is very disturbed. So he went to him. When he came to master, he said, so, and he thought master would console him, sit with him and instead of that, master said, what can I do? It all depends on the will of God. Go, like that he said. So that was very harsh for Ramchandra Dutta. He is a doctor, you see, he is an eminent person in the society. Not that he was not an unknown person. In the Calcutta society, he was one of the eminent citizens of that place and well educated and being a medical man. And he was in charge of a very good testing laboratory also. That was what he used to test and he was very uh, good. He was morally very strong person. So naturally, he was so very good. And one big merchant, a merchant, you know, who imports oil from UK. So he brought the oil and he has invested so much of money. And he came to Ramchandra Dutta once and explained to him, I will give you 40,000 rupees. He said, for what? You have to certify that my oil that I have imported is properly, is okay. That's all. Certified that this oil is up to, uh, as per the specification. You certify. Then government will allow to sell it out. Then he will get a lot of money. So he imported few huge, very now a huge number of gallons. But then Ramchandra, what he said, he said no. I will test it, and if it is even 0 0.01 less than the specifications, I will not allow it. Then he said, I will give you forty thousand rupees in eighteen hundred. Imagine forty thousand rupees. What should be the sum? value today as on 2004 and that was the time when Ramchandra said don't offer me any bribe and he tested he found it was defective he rejected that so such was the great strength of mind he had but with regard to God why he lost all faith in God that also is important in his childhood days he was so fond of Sri Krishna Sri Krishna's uh, image he would keep and he would sing and dance. Sometimes he would sing, he would make up himself as a girl and he would dance before Sri Krishna's idol. That image is there, he would in the house. So you find he was so fond of Krishna and at the youth time, suddenly he became an atheist. He was not at all able to understand the working of God. So he said, God is not there. If God is there, I should be able to see him. 
But who is seeing this God? That was his question in the mind. So the doubts were assailing him. At that time he had gone and Sri Ramakrishna said to him harshly, what can I do? Like that he has said. So he was very, very uh, sad on that day. Then what he did was, his first impulse was to drown himself in the Ganges and die. Because to whom he, with all expectation he came, that person, instead of consoling him, and he harshly is talking to him. So what is the use of keeping this life? So he thought, let me go and drown myself. Then he thought, no, I should not lose my life. For this, let me test Sri Ramakrishna. So he went to the corner of the veranda of Sri Ramakrishna's room. And there he laid down the northern veranda, as they say. He laid down there. And then he began to repeat the mantra he received in his dream from Sri Ramakrishna. So that mantra which he received in dream, he started repeating. And he didn't know what, how many hours went. And in the middle of the night, maybe, slowly, Sri Ramakrishna opened his door and came nearer to him, sat nearer to him, took his head on his lap, and he put his hand on him. And that, that was made such a cool impression that he made on Ramdatta, our master has come to me and he is putting his hand on my head. And you know, and he was putting his hand in such a beautiful way. And then he saw that and then master said to him, well, stop repeating that mantra. You don't need to repeat that mantra. You have done everything for your life. Now your life's aim is to serve the devotees. One great change has come. He had turned around that he doesn't, because he has seen Sri Ramakrishna in person, that is, he doesn't need to do any of the sadhana. This was a very important point in our life, you know. We are doing sadhanas as directed by Guru. And sometimes a time may come in our life that we don't need to do further sadhana. When you don't need to do sadhana, Sri Ramakrishna says, the sadhanas will go off on their own. When? When you have the horripilation in your body by hearing the name Govinda, Govinda, Krishna, Krishna, by hearing the name of God, when your, your whole heart pulse pumps and then you say that, ah, oh, what a wonderful thing. Eh? The hair stands on the end, he says, by hearing the name of God. Seated in your heart, that same God that you are worshipping, he is there in your heart. And that's how Sri Ramakrishna brought him back to God. Then he wanted to serve the devotees, okay, plenty of service, plenty is there. And uh, on that day, he said another thing, Ram, Ram used to call him Ram only, he said Ram, Give me back the mantra that I gave, he said. And then how do you give the mantra back? There is a system. If you have taken initiation from somebody and then you want to give back the mantra to that guru, then how do you give back? Is there any, is there any way to give back? This giving back is not well, uh, it's not supported by the gurus. They don't want you to give back that. But in this case, Sri Ramakrishna made him, you give back the mantra to be said. And Sri Ramakrishna touched Ram's head with his right foot. And Ram also lost outward consciousness. That was the situation at that time. Then gradually Sri Ramakrishna came into normalcy. What he saw, he said, just as you offer a flower on the feet of the worshipper, worshipped. So in the same way, he thought of the mantra as if he is holding his hand and offered in his feet. And here Ramakrishna said, you do not <coughs> need to practice any more spiritual disciplines. What a wonderful thing he said. 
no spiritual is no sadhana for you you have reached the ultimate in your life you don't need to practice any sadhana but come here now and then meet me and while coming don't forget to bring something a price a price value something you bring he said because sri ramakrishna knew this ramchandra datta was a great conjuice he would not like to spend anything you are such a uh, very thrifty man he would not to spend so what sri ramakrishna said you come and meet me but while bringing don't come in the empty hand bring me something even one paise so that's how he instructed him and then this man completely lost the touch with attachment with money how he became so generous you know this uh, home satsang as we call it now in south africa i used to go to home satsang and when the devotees would ask me maharaj please come let us have a small satsang so i would tell the devotee they would ask me maharaj whom we shall invite i would reply to them no i am not going to tell any name to you you invite your like minded people in your home if they whether they are initiated or they are known to ram krishna mission or they know the swami nothing is required you invite you everybody who will be convenient to you and conducive to your thinking that type of people you invite then i will come so i go to such people's house and then this going to home satsang was done by sri ram krishna himself he used to visit suddenly he said to ram ram i am going to visit you on such and such a day like that he said and ram was stunned because he knew how much money is involved in that because some 20 30 people will come and sri ram krishna never comes alone he will have a band of people going with him and all the people he has to feed them now and he has to arrange for the seated and give them tea etc in the first and so and you know so many things are there so he knew that and then he was a little worried and then he went to others he consulted then manmohan mitra came and told him don't worry i will manage everything anything etc he told him and made him a, a plan how to receive all the people how to receive sri ramakrishna and when they go how to do pranam etc etc you know this is a big thing many of us do not know suddenly you call me your home i go there i am not ramakrishna i am not telling you that way but even a swami has come you do not know exactly how to receive a swami there are many places i have seen they do not know what to do in one lady in calcutta when i entered she could not stand she could not sit she could not cry she could not uh, laugh she was completely out of her mood because she didn't know what to do with me at least she can say come and sit here maharaj she could not say that she was so much of a uh, uh, or disturbed the mind at that time by seeing me as a then lastly she said maharaj please take your seat then i went and sat in the sofa so you see you do not know how to how to honor a great person when he comes to your home only a few devotees understand that so this home satsang was the way that we teach so sri ram krishna used to go now he has told ram i am going to come to your home get ready and then he got ready and you know later people used to say if anybody request sri ram krishna to his home first thing he will go and meet ram babu and ram babu would give clear cut instruction how to receive sri ram krishna how to feed him and what are the things suitable for his stomach everything he would tell so and he would serve the devotees at that time he would tell don't worry if 25 devotees come on that day the cost of the food i shall bear you don't need to worry about that like that he would console the other devotees when sri ram krishna goes so that is how this ramchandra datta became an expert in home satsang organization <coughs> so the logistics of arranging a satsang in home those things he became an expert they say so the other devotees would go to him and then get training that's how he said so the ram was a true disciple in him and uh, he said those who serve the devotees serve me so you do the service to the devotees that got into his mind to the letter ram babu applied that teaching he said yes i must do such a wonderful service to the devotees that itself is my life 
And you know, you'll be surprised. Before his death, five days before his death, he told his he has also he was empowered to give initiation. So he used to give initiate. So he told his initiated devotees, after my death, take my ashes and keep at the entrance of my home, he said. Yes. And people asked him, why do you want your ashes to be kept at the entrance of your home? You know, when the entrance, when people go, they put their foot at the entrance and then walk. He said, the devotees of Sri Ramakrishna, their devotees, souls of their feet must touch my head forever. I want that wonderful blessings, he said. You see, devotees' foot should touch his head. That was his yearning. He says, that is what I want. If the devotee's feet falls on my head, I am blessed. That was his great conviction in Sri Ramakrishna's words. And then he was like that. Now you see what happened to him at the, before the death also. He was a wonderful person. He had no proper conducive atmosphere in Calcutta for his uh, sitting and remembering Sri Ramakrishna. So he wanted to purchase a quiet place, a, a full of trees and no sound can come from outside, a solitary place he chose. And that solitary place is called Kakudu Gachi. In Calcutta, if you go to Kakudu Gachi, you'll find Ramchandra Dutta's house is there. And that house is, at that time, it was completely bereft of human habitation all around. It was completely secluded and solitariness, you can enjoy that as we enjoy the solitariness in the Allegri Hills. When you come here, you will know how it is. Solitude is actually a beautiful word it is and you can experience that. So he purchased that house. Today, that very place, Kakurgachi, is not in solitude. You can go there and see. All around houses have come. It's a big, it has become a city now. So at that time, he purchased that house. And he told Sri Ramakrishna, I have purchased one house at a distance place, but it is a very quiet place. It is very solitary. And then, uh, like that he told. Then one day Ramakrishna asked him, Well, Ram, you never took me to your home. When are you going to take me to your new house? I want to see that. He himself asked. You see, the God comes to you on his own. On his own, he says, I am going to visit your place. Arrange for that. And then he arranged a very big party like, and he arranged, Sri Ramakrishna entered by the carriage and he came down and then he used to, he went inside, he had a beautiful Tulsi grove. You know, I told you from the childhood days, he was very fond of Sri Krishna. Whoever is fond of Sri Krishna must have great respect for Tulsi leaves. So Tulsi leaves, keeping Tulsi leaves in the house, is a great, one of the greatest way of doing a homage to Narayana. Think of Narayana and Tulsi must be there. We have in Yelagri, of course, Tulsi grow is that we have plenty of Tulsi as we have. And we give to people also. We have two types of Tulsis are there, you know, one Krishna Tulsi and one Radha Tulsi. Both the Tulsis are with us. So when you come next time to Yelagri, you can see the Tulsis. And these Tulsis grow was there. Sri Ramakrishna came and he bowed down to Tulsi Ma because Tulsi is representing Narayana and the Narayana himself is standing there as if he bowed down to that. And then he went inside, he made him seated and he offered some uh, prasad to him and Sri Ramakrishna had and then the Kirtan started, dancing was there, singing was there, everything was there. So that place, Ram gave the name Yogodhyam. Yogodhyana means yoga plus Udhyana. Udhyan is the word for garden. Udhyan means garden. That is a very beautiful word in Hindi also we use Udhyan like this. So garden. So what is that garden? In this garden, yoga takes place. When you go to Kakudgachi and you really feel the wonderful atmosphere there, you can see that. Yoga Udhyan it is called and he made that name and he stayed there and there only he said to his devotees put the, my ashes there so that's all 
when Sri Ramakrishna went into Mahasamadhi, his ashes were collected, you know, after burning in the Kashipur garden house. A portion of Ram Babu brought it to his home and he kept it and he built a temple for the relics of Sri Ramakrishna. So as I said at the beginning, he was the first person to build a temple for Sri Ramakrishna's relics. And then later we got lots and lots of temples. Today we have got many temples all over the world for Sri Ramakrishna. And uh, yes, new, new temples are also coming up. Even in private centers, which are not affiliated to Ramakrishna order, I have seen beautiful temples are out there. So the temples are coming up in a wonderful way. So now this Ram Babu, his last days were taken exclusively worship of Sri Ramakrishna. His mind was completely absorbed in Sri Ramakrishna. And there, when Master went there, so he tells to uh, Manila, in order to meditate on God, one should try to first to think of him as free from Upadis, all limitations. God is beyond Upadi. He is beyond speech and mind. So he says, it is easy to meditate on an incarnation. Just imagine your own life. You take up your life and see, have you ever tried to meditate on Nirakara, Nirguna Brahman? Have you tried to meditate on a formless God? Try to find out. If you have tried, you would have understood the terrible effect of that because it is not so easy. You cannot even conceive the infinity. You cannot conceive the vastness of God's presence. You cannot conceive that. But if you take an incarnation and give the incarnation photo and open your eyes and look at him and then close your eyes, suddenly, if you are habituated in Japa, then what happens? The incarnation figure appears in your mental eye. And sometimes it appears full, fully effulgent, full of light. It appears before your mind and you can concentrate on that form of God so easily because it is just like a human form. It does not create any fear in you. Other forms like Smashan Kali, if you think of like that, you get fear. But you don't get fear in Sri Ramakrishna's incarnation form. That is why incarnation becomes easier. Sri Ramakrishna used to say there is a very big festival is going on the other side. There is a big screen in front of you. You cannot look at that, what festivity is going on the other side. So what you do, you put a small hole in the screen and put your eye in that hole and you can see the entire thing you can see. So that is how he says that one hole is the incarnation. So if you have incarnation in front of you, you can see the infinity you can capture in incarnation. That's why incarnation worship has gained even if you say that Shiva and Vishnu, Brahma's worship, if you take it in India, no corner if you go, you will see people are easily worshipping Sri Ramachandra Murti and Sri Krishna Murti. They are the incarnations and they are easily, it can be thought of. So beautiful. So it is so easy to think of an incarnation. So incarnation worship is easy. God born as man. Yes, God in man. This is how the body is a mere covering. He says, it is like a lantern with a light burning inside. So he arrived at the garden house of Ram Babu and then he got out of the carriage and then other devotees also came to the Tulsi grove and we saw that house Ram Krishna made pranam etc. So the mango was named by Ram Babu as a Ramakrishna bow. Even today the tree is there and when you go to Kangurgaji you can see that mango tree and the mango fruit is called Ramakrishna bow. That is what he named. He named it. And there was a pond. In the pond Sri Ramakrishna went and washed his feet and his face with his hands. So that pond is called Ramakrishna Kun. What a beautiful word. 
This kund word you must know. If you go to uh, North India, you will find lots of Sita kund is there, Radha kund is there in Vrindavan. Like that, there are many places kund is there. Kund means a pot, a, a, a kulam. In Tamil, we say a kulam. So a pond. So the pond is called kund. So that this Ramakrishna kund it is called. Even today, we all go there and we don't wash our feet there. Because, see, Ramakrishna has washed in that water. So we go there and take the water and sprinkle on our head. Let our brain be purified. So we take that water and sprinkle. So, and uh, such was the devotion of Ramchandra Bahu to Master. There are other wonderful incidents are there. I think you all have to uh, slowly uh, read that book. They live with God and understand some of the incidents in Ramchandra's death, how he became so favorite of Sri Ramakrishna. And uh, he wrote a lot of books also. And during Swamiji is going to America uh, as an unknown person, at that time, from 1893 onwards, in Calcutta, Ramchandra Dutta was giving lectures on Sri Ramakrishna in three theatres, city theatre, the Star Theatre, Minerva Theatre, all the theatres he would go and give a Sunday class, he would give a lecture on Sri Ramakrishna. Such was his command over English language and he could give in English and people used to come hundreds and they listen to him. Though he was a member of Brahma Samaj earlier, he became one of the prime evangelists of Sri Ramakrishna. So the 16 disciples of Sri Ramakrishna are 16 evangelists. Evangelist is one who takes the name of his master and spreads for others. And that is what Rambabu used to do. By his lecture, he drew lots of people and made them listen about Sri Ramakrishna. What a wonderful thing. Do we do that? Can we become evangelists of Sri Ramakrishna? When you meet another friend, when you meet another house, or when you go to other place, can you speak of Sri Ramakrishna? Some devotees tell me, Maharaj, when we go to that another house for some festival, and no talk about Ramakrishna can be done. Because all low-key talks they are doing. They are talking about ZTV, they are talking about this program, that program, and what is happening in the politics. All those things they are talking. But there is no chance of talking yes. about Sri Ramakrishna. Will you go there and talk about, not talk about Ramakrishna? Even any topic comes, doesn't matter. You have got the knack to turn the topic towards Sri Ramakrishna. That is what we are supposed to do. And then only we become evangelists. We carry the name of Sri Ramakrishna to others. When people come to me, you know, I sit with them and hear them. When I listen to them, they are go on talking about their own affairs. But I turn the talk towards Sri Ramakrishna. We have to do it. It is very necessary. By turning the talk always to Sri Ramakrishna, you become the carrier of Sri Ramakrishna's name. And Sri Ramakrishna resides in you. And he will, he will take over from there. So you are not doing anything. That's how Mr. Yam was there. Mahindranath Gupta, Mahindranath Bhagavad was there like that. He used to speak about Ramakrishna only to everyone. And that is what we all we have to learn, a very important aspect from these types of dedicated disciples' lives. So Yang's life is an example for us that nothing else we should speak. We speak only, so what are you going to speak at this age, you think? At, so we are all older people. Yes, we can say, Maharaj, but we are younger. But as young people, if we don't speak uh, their, what they are speaking, then they will discard us from their society. We cannot move with them. We cannot talk to them anymore. Don't worry about that. But give one example of Sri Ramakrishna, even without telling the name of Sri Ramakrishna, you can definitely speak. The examples of Sri Ramakrishna are plenty. Thousands of examples are there. Each example may be very apt for the situation today. So why don't you use those examples and then speak to them so that they will also wonderful, ah, this person is giving some nice example. Very good, like that they will say. So slowly, slowly, you can make yourself the carrier of Sri Ramakrishna. 
He may be carrier of some viruses. You know, some people said, oh, I did not get COVID at all. Then the doctor said, what do you mean? You did not get COVID. The COVID virus is sitting in you and you have become a carrier for COVID. Like that they used to make fun. So in, when I was in Ireland, I used to hear this type of talk. So people can become carrier of viruses. Why don't we become carrier of that, our dearest incarnation? That is how we must understand this. So now I am giving to Juma. Juma will. Uh... Yes, Maharaj. And yes. Any questions? So it, it takes a while, Maharaj, for all the information and the input that you've given for it to register, and you know we we, we get transported mentally to a different zone altogether. So we we were in Kakulgashi Yoga Yoga Yogodan, and. Uh, now we are coming down to the plane where we are at lower level and we are trying to... Yes, uh, and the last part of it that you said that being carriers of uh, Ram Krishna, that was amazing. I know in our... We really need these practical tips and how to do it. And uh, very true that, you know, you cannot take the names and in the social circles, when you start saying, as it is, you get branded, oh, if you start it again, there she goes, and oh, you you live in a different plane, and all, and all those things you have to hear. And then when you bring Ram Krishna and Thakur in, in the talk, then they say, oh my God, there she goes. So, but yes, it is that point that you made, that um, uh, the parables of Ram Krishna, the examples, there's so many which we can actually do it but uh, for doing that we have to read and uh, read it so many times Maharaj when uh, what uh, we read and then moment we close shut the book and we are back to the life and all the struggles doing all the duties especially in a western country where you have to do everything and that goes off so how do we retain the these are all very the, and the, the beauty of Sri Ramakrishna is Thakur is that he would give very this worldly examples, not other worldly examples. How to retain? So this is a big challenge which I as a devotee feel. I want to join the dots. I desperately want to join the dots, you know, not just intellectualize. Okay, we do it, we, but converting from the intellect level to the practical level. Mm -hmm. How, I don't know, there are no shortcuts, but... How, what are, what could be some few practical tips? You see, when uh, we do not, we read it, but we do not retain. Is it not? The retention is a big problem, as yes. Amita says, for the seniors, not only seniors, even for youngsters. Because at the apt time, you must remember that right. particular example. <laughs> retention is a big problem. Why retention is not able to sit in our uh, mind, why we are not able to retain. There are several factors of that. Food is one of the major factors in retention. You know, ahara suddha, sattva shuddhi. Sattva, as you, we are made of three gunas. Three gunas are there, sattva, rajas, tamas. And the sattva guna must increase in our, in quantity, it must increase in our body and mind. When the sattva guna increases, then the mind is able to get the retention power. That's why ahara suddha sattva shuddhi. The ahara should be suddhi. Direct impact, no? Yes, yes. It has got a very good uh, effect on the mind. Because the forgetfulness comes because of our, because going towards tamasic food. If you have tamasic type of food more and more, naturally our sattva shuddhi will not happen. The way sattva shuddhi means our mind becoming suddhi. That will not happen. So that is the major one. Second one, how much time you can you spend in your rare, your free time? How much account? How much uh, uh, quantity you spend? Say four hours in a day, you get free time. Exactly, completely free time. Are you be uh, are you able to spend that four hours time in Sri Ramakrishna or in any other things? So your duty bound certain works are there in the home. I understand every house mother has got a duty bound set of duties are there. You do that. But apart from that, you may have some free time. 
Suppose I take it in 24 hours, 4 hours or 3 hours, we have free time. Are you able to put it in Sri Ramakrishna? So at that time, if I go and see, suppose film, suppose I read some uh, story books, or suppose I go for gossiping with my neighbors, like that if you can take it out, then how much time you get? You don't get much time. So duty-bound activities other than that, we must say, we must find out how much we are able to put our mind to Sri Ramakrishna. If we can increase that, I'm not telling it is bad, that getting your uh, the hours less, but increase it slowly, 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 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, then you make it one hour, say in 24 hours, one hour I spend for Sri Ramakrishna. Like that you take a, a determined one, and then like, that's why we say please come for uh, Antar Yogam, the retreats, attend the retreats, at least on that day, you know, recently there was a retreat at uh, Konampati in Tamil Nadu. Five day retreat, today is the last day. And so many devotees went there. What happened? Five days, 20,000 japa you have to make per day. Is that contract? 20,000? 20,000. You are not going to wash your utensils. You are not going to wash your clothes. You are not going to prepare my dishes. You are not going to do any work there. No work is given to you. Completely off from all work. You sit in the temple and do. Or you walk and do with, uh, the thinking of. So the japa has to be done continuously all day. You can walk around also in the garden. But the japa must continue. And no gossip with anybody else. You find 20,000. Yes, there are many devotees who have done 20,000 a day. So five days a time means in one quarter, if you can spend five days and you do the japa yakya, one lakh you have done in five days time. Really, yes. It's a big amount. It's a big amount, you know, as a number wise. But you can do it. It is possible. So, with all the duties allotted to you, even if you take one hour a day, half an hour a day, I'm not telling you how much you have to take. That depends upon you. But you can definitely put your mind in Sri Ramakrishna. Then what happens? As a result of that, putting your mind in Sri Ramakrishna, in other times also, Sri Ramakrishna will sit in us. That is the beauty of Sri Ramakrishna. Thank you, Maharaj. That was very, very insightful. And anyone else? Any other questions? I got a question. Yes. I mean, I got something to uh, add, or not add really, uh, share about this uh, solution of retaining uh, God's uh, Sri Ramakrishna's name uh, while working. Um, recently, I've been to Sri Ramakrishna mission, and over there, I stayed in the guest house and uh, in Bangalore, and. Uh, we went to the meal all throughout the day. And over there, what I noticed is everyone is very punctual. And while doing it, they constantly would have their mind focused on God. So whether they are giving, uh, serving the food, whether they are cooking, whether they are about to start eating, they are constantly thinking about God. And in a gospel also, I heard, which I also do most of the time, 99% of the time. So what I do is, uh, when, uh, what gospel, in gospel also, Sri Ramakrishna said, that in one hand, hold the name of God, and in another hand, do your work. So like, um, for example, I start doing a project on my computer. God guide me in doing this project successfully. And that way we are like trying to hear what is God is trying to, uh, whatever the wisdom that God has put in us, we are trying to implement it. But in that way, we are also thinking about God. Yes, so while working, work, working, 
also we can think about god so yes. ultimately whole throughout the day you are thinking about god yes thank you so much it's a very practical example that you showed us yes we are their devotees who are practicing this definitely and that's how they are able to think god but if the retention is not there then we have to do such practices where conducive for the remembrance if you do any activity that is conducive for the remembrance that will stand so retention will always will come and then finally we pray to sri ram krishna hey ram krishna please allow me to think of you allow me to remember you that is what we pray yes Sandhya and Indrani, they had some questions. Uh, so, Sandhya, would you like to ask? Uh, now, Star Maharaj ji. Uh, yes, I do uh, make little effort when we I talk to my relatives mm -hmm. or the helpers who come to home. Mm -hmm. I talk to Abhor Sri Ram Krishna Ma Sharda Devi. A little effort I am mm -hmm. making. Uh, my question here is about Ahara Shuddhi. When we talk about shuddhi, we say generally we should not eat onion, garlic, and all, right, Maharaji? So, in what way can we implement it? You see, this uh, ahar shuddhi pro pro uh, problem is a very detailed. We require at least two hours to discuss about that. But in mm -hmm. short, I can tell you, as we follow Swami Vivekananda's rule regarding food matter. We are not fanatics. We are not going to dictate to the people what they should eat. What is the rule for the for our devotees? We say, as Swami Vivekananda said, eat what suits your constitution. Suppose this uh, onion and uh, brinjal doesn't suit you. Will you eat brinjal? You won't eat. If I have allergy. From some other vegetable, even though I am a vegetarian, I am not going to eat that. So, what you should eat that suits your constitution. Suppose your constitution is made of sattva rajas tamas combination. In a particular uh, combination, it is there. So that means the food that you take that suits you means, according to your constitution, the food is bringing out that elements of suitability. So it is conducive to you. If it is your body takes it, accepts it, then you should not worry. So whatever you eat, we are not going to give instruction. So we are not very strict like like some. There is in Hinduism there is called Vaishnavic methods are there. Vaishnavism is very yeah. good. In Vaishnavism there are some rules and regulations are given for the devotees. Yes, if you are a Vaishnavic and you are a Vaishnavic family belonging to. Then you must adopt those rules and regulations. Otherwise, we tell, we tell our. I used to be in uh, foreign countries. I used to tell the devotees. So I used to tell what suits you, you eat. Doesn't matter. But then, inclination, natural way of inclination, is taking you to a particular type of food. You do it. Take it. Have it. I have seen Bengalis uh, completely becoming vegetarian. I have seen they are not taking fish anymore. They have become vegetarian. Why? In Ranchi, in our sanatorium, we have got staff. One staff family is a Bengali family. They used to make fish, but the child, a two-year-old child, refuses to eat fish, and he became vegetarian. Even now, she has grown up now, and she is vegetarian only. So you can see what suits you that you eat. We are not putting any rules for that. But yes, yes. Does does the food that you eat does it take your mind away from God? No, not because you should offer that food to Sri Ramakrishna as Swami yes. Avastri and offer it. Yes. And after finishing food, you thank Sri Ramakrishna for giving you a nice meal. Yes. So in that way, God can be brought even at every stage of your life. Yes, I do offer everything, whatever I buy. Yes. Any material, immaterial, everything I offer. Yes, that is how the <laughs> name of Ramakrishna should be brought. So if you bring it yes. again and again and again, then retention will be more yes. after some time. Yes, so, yes, yes, okay. yes. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Abhishek, Maharaj, your bell just went off, so it's. Oh, no, no, for bell, for not for me, for the Brahmacharya. 
Oh, okay, all right. So, can we? Do you have a five more yes, minutes? Sir. Yes, yes. Okay. I have up to five forty-five. Okay. So, Indrani was the first person. Indrani, would you like to ask your question, please? Now, and Abhishekanda, you can ask after that. Yes, thank you, Pranam Maharaj. Namaste. Maharaj is. Maharaj, today's uh, discussion was very interesting for me because only yesterday or day before yesterday I was reading a chapter on um, Ramchandra Datta and uh, these disciples and it reminded me, today's discussion Maharaj reminded me of uh, one day you were talking about uh, this idea of uh, Thakur's authorage mm -hmm. as Kolmi uh, Shaket Dal and uh, so Ramchandra Datta then um, he brought, I think, Shurendra Nath Mitro. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, his cousin was Monmohan. Yes. Then in Shurendra Nath's uh, uh, Jatra program, I think uh, Vivekananda first met Thakur. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then again, uh, when the matrimonial relation was brought for, the, uh, that was Monmohan's sister. Mm -hmm. Thakur was worried that uh, Rakhal, uh, the, the, uh, the girl, the bride might be an obstacle, but mm -hmm. then my sister was already, uh, uh, they were already uh, kind of devoted to Tha Thakur because of Monmo. All this, that entire connection mm -hmm. so that uh, I remembered. And I'm another. Happy. Yes, I'm happy that you have read earlier these things. That always gives you wonderful feeling, you know, that it's uh, as if you are taking a revision of what you studied. Yes, Maharaj, it gives a lot of joy. And Maharaj also, uh, I felt very uh, uh, happy because uh, when while growing up, throughout my school and college days, I used to visit Jogodan. It was near my house. Okay. So that tank, that uh, and all the I used to attend, and that piece, Maharaj, that you mentioned, I remember. And there was a beautiful library also, yeah. of which my father was a member. So mm -hmm. books and all. Okay. So thank you so much, Maharaj, for... Uh, thank you, you are blessed indeed. Thank you, Maharaj. Yes, Abhishek. Uh, Pranam Maharaj, uh, yes. I just uh, want, uh, wanted to share an uh, experience. Recently, my maternal uncle, uh, mm -hmm. he got a from... And there's a drop in the light and, uh, and uh, my mother went there and spent the whole day uh, there because uh, now uh, at uh, Kamar Pupur. He stays mm -hmm. in Kolkata but uh, uh, my mother is from Kamar Pupur and he went there uh, for Diksha but Maharaj says, said that um, as he stays in Kolkata only, he should um, get Diksha from Yogotan. And um, my mother went with my uncle and uh, she spent the whole day there and with all the devotees who, who were uh, that day, um, they, they were taking Diksha and it was a blissful day for her and he, she stayed in the mandir and did her japa and she was so happy. I, I just wanted to share this experience, Maharaj. Thank yes. you so much. We, we believe that the Ram Babu is still living in Jogodya. It's a, such a wonderful... His small Samadhi also is there. When you go there, we make Pranam yes. again. Who was nearer to Sri Ramakrishna? And Sri Ramakrishna touched him many times. Such a wonderful body he had, you see. Purified body. Such, is, such was the person. Who brought Sri Ramakrishna to the people? So that way, he is always to be remembered. I am happy that Yoga Dhani went there and our mother had a yes. beautiful day at that time. Yes. So, uh, any more questions? I don't see any more. Oh, Indrani, do your hand is still raised? Okay. I'm sorry, you heard that. Sorry. No, no, no. I thought you had the questions. And uh, anyone else? Uh, okay. Yes. Yes, oh, yes, yes. yes. Who is that? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, really. Yeah, uh, that's what uh, she, she's uh, from. I, I keep forgetting her name. Uh, I Do you want to ask a question? Rajeshwari Kanjigram. No, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. 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 Yes, Maharaj. Um, by Guru Maharaj Grace, uh, we have satsang every month 
and uh, as well as I invited my close circles of friends uh, from ladies club, mm -hmm. lions club, rotary mm -hmm. clubs, all the members for the satsang. Mm -hmm. uh, they are interested to come at uh, what is a new, again, uh, uh, sorry for the Tamil, again, they are coming okay. and uh, they when they saw the Swamiji's and their speeches, mm -hmm. uh, last month uh, our Swamiji has arrived mm -hmm. in our satsang. Everybody is, uh, uh, have a very uh, liked him. Uh, they said, uh, what a great Swamiji he looks mm -hmm. like that. And they said also, when again the Swamiji came, please mm -hmm. uh, uh, invite all of us. Okay. Like that. Uh, like that. Uh, and as well as we give the small photos of Mother, Gurumra, mm. Swamiji, small, small photos with the sayings. Mm. And uh, when they have some problems in their family, mm. they said, you last time told me, you pray to Mother like that. When I sit and pray with uh, with that photo, Mother, mm. uh, I get uh, the problems solved. Mm. Then they became a very big devotee to Mother first. Yeah. Wonderful. And then they came to me in contact, in touch, and they came to our uh, Ramakrishna Math Kanjipuram also. Yes, you see how you, one person who is devoted to Sri Ramakrishna, has become now a carrier of Sri yes, Ramakrishna's name. Really, yes, blessed. you are blessed. Yes. Mother Thank Grace you. now. Yes, and I tell us. And as well as I give the to all the Looking at the same time. So, uh, yes, and Raj, Rajesh, really want to finish? Oh, and one more thing. And I give that message in to the all other groups also. Mm -hmm. Mother saints, uh, Gurumara saints, okay. like that. I, I If it is uh, very nice, I, I send it to that uh, ladies club group wow. and that lions club group. Yes. Like that, uh, uh, that is also, I think, uh, somebody say, somebody say, mm. they get the grace and mm. they are in connect with the Guru Maharaj. No? Yes, yes. So, I sent that uh, messages to yes. all of them also. Yes. Who will be moved by what words, we do not know. Yes, where Sri Ramakrishna will come and touch, we do not know. So, it's always so, better to speak about, yes. That's a good thing. Thank and you, Master. Palash wants to say something. Yeah, I just wanted to share one experience. <laughs> Two, three years back, I uh, went to Kolkata and we hired a private taxi. So, uh, I also, I, I went to Udbodh, uh to have mass darshan. So, I invited the taxi driver and I said, you also come. Mm. Instead of waiting outside, you also take the darshan. So, he came inside and came with us mm. out. And the next day also, he came with us for some other place. Then he said, uh, uh, the, uh, he did know that she is Mother Sharda. Mm. So he said, the lady which I saw, the idol of the uh, Devi which I saw, I um, she came in my dreams. I see. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Then I thought, oh, it's uh, so nice. Only once he had the darshan, he didn't know who she was. What I did, I bought a small picture of uh, Ma Sharada mm. and I gifted to him. Mm. This is amazing, Sandhya. Yes, really yes. So that was uh, not See, my experience. Just because you call him inside, yes, come with yes, me, yes. don't stay there, come with me. And that yes. brought a great change in his life itself. Yes, and, and he it said that I had to be. So this is a small experience which, because we are all devotees, I just wanted to share. Mm. No, thank you. That's very good. Good thing. Thank yes. you so much for sharing this. This was amazing. Uh, yes, Maharaj, now your coffee time, tea time, we'll be, we'll be well past that or, yes. Uh, don't worry about that because I, I told you 5.45, I must go because 6.15, our hour is there. If okay. we all have uh, time, we can spend time. Otherwise, we can go. Maharaj, Namaste Maharaj. Suluba. I am Vijay Tashmi. <laughs> Namaste Maharaj. Roma Sando Show. Kalandi Gundula. Roma Nalan Chimaraj. Speech. Hello. Ah, oh, Ram Gara, Ram Chanda Data, Pati Ka and Kasi in the Toto, the Kan Kushi. Alangi Pona Marin Dipenke. 
ரொம்ப நல்லா இருந்துச்சு மகாராஜ் ஆனா அவங்க கிட்ட சொல்லுங்க நம்ம ஃபாரின்ல இருக்கவங்க கிட்ட ஜபா இந்தியா தான் இங்க ரொம்ப சென்னையில முக்கியம் இந்தியால ஏன்னா ஜபா ஜபத்துக்கு நிறைய முக்கியத்துவம் இங்க குடுக்கறோம் இல்லையா அது அவங்களுக்கு அவங்க எப்படி செய்யறதுன்னு தெரியாம தானே இருக்காங்க டைம் இல்லன்னு ஜம் <laughs> 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 as we do in here in india in tamil nadu uh, particularly japam is a very important uh, matter in our religious life like this japa yagya five days japa yagya these things are not known outside the uh, tamil nadu so right. why not we, why not we tell them like that is yes that is not thank you vijay lakshmi okay maraj ah aarthi kalamuno time aachu ah maraj ready aita kalamathukku வரங்க மகாராஜ் ரொம்ப 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 தேங்க்ஸ் மகாராஜ் ஜெய் ஸ்ரீராம் கிருஷ்ணா டாக்டர் பல்லா டாக்டர் பல்லா ஷீ இஸ் फ्रॉम अरुणाचल प्रदेश वेरी वेरी नियरेस्ट टू द चाइना बॉर्डर इज பல்லா ஷூட் யூ லைக் டு சே समथिंग யூ ஹேவ் டு அன்மியூட் யூ ஹேவ் டு அன்மியூட் யுவர் செல்ஃப் டு அன்மியூட் 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 not here he is not unmuted uh you have to unmute yourself dr palash your microphone is off switched off okay next to him there is yes. one spps and see right. you can right. ask him uh yes mr Maram. yes sir மகாராஜ் பிரணாம் மகாராஜ் மதுரையிலிருந்து பாண்டியன் மகாராஜ் தமிழ்நாடு மதுரை நான் தமிழ்ல பேசுறேன் இங்கிலீஷ் எனக்கு அவ்வளவு <laughs> the connection is not stable mr sp so we cannot hear i ena amma amma maharaj you will have to say in that no you have to 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 you can mute from me maharaj yes i can i can hello you muted then i will tell you yeah okay oh uh, thank you pandian marat uh, thank you pandian enna chinaka neenga pesuradhu kaadhula villa enna adu cut 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 ta vandirukku over vaarthiyum adanalai engalukku onnu puriyala adutha thoru adutha thoru paakalam okay va okay thank you for joining and dr palash you uh, would you like to ask a question you have to unmute yourself first please we cannot you hear can you unmute. from your side you can unmute i cannot unmute uh, i can mute but i cannot unmute okay you can't unmute dr palash you have to unmute your call your microphone is turned off if you can unmute your call and then speak we cannot hear you i think he is also not hearing you see <laughs> Okay so any more questions which is yes. if nothing else then we can I I have a question uh, that is uh, where do I find I uh, want to uh, can you recommend a book where we can read about Ramchandra Datta Oh yes see Ramchandra Datta like it has been written very authentically by Swami Chetanananda and that is uh, mentioned in the book called They Live with God the book is available in they live with god okay they live with god yes that is the book name is a part of voluminous book and uh, each disciple is a disciple okay 
Okay. If nothing else is there, yes, Prithvish, I have not heard him. No, no, Maharaj, no questions. I, I was uh, asking Ramchandra yes. Dutta. Uh, what, he uh, he never became a monk, right? No. But yes, he, yes, you raised a point. Yes, he wanted to become a monk, and he went to Sri Ramakrishna, and he said, "I want to become a Sri Ramakrishna chastised him. Who will look after your uh, wife and uh, children? Go back and serve the devotees. That is what the command he gave. He did not allow him to become a monk." Uh, and he allowed him to go and initiate. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. The Ramakrishna's disciples, many of them who were initiated by Ramakrishna, later on became their guru on their own uh, merit. Even Swamiji also did not stop that. When Swamiji came back from America and uh, the newfound uh, enthusiasm for Swamiji, and Swamiji was a great celebrity at that time, he heard Ramchandra is sick. And he went to see him in his house. And then Ramchandrata was very weak. So he went to bathroom and uh, without his chapel, Swamiji took the chapel and gave him. And Ramchandra says, Hey, Noreen, what you have done? You are such a great man now. And you are taking my <laughs> uh, So like that he feels that. So Swamiji had great respect for him. Initially, initially for you, uh, interest I am telling you, initially this monastery, monastic boys and the household disciples they had a stiff yes, yes. yes. they had an understanding that they, you know, they wanted to have the full asti yes 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 I was going to ask but that question in yes. their fighting Sri Ma commented unito nei ar unar asti niye ekon yara bhukku pesta so Maharaj Sri Ma would initiate Master Mahasha no, I'm not telling Sri Ma. I'm telling Sri Ma. No, no, no. No, my question. No, no, Ma to bolo chhe. Ita Mama onno. It's in a different context altogether. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Sri Ma would he initiate also disciples? We do not know, but one uh, Nityatmananda he says he was initiated by Sri Ma. He says. Oh. So Ram I think that he has been initiating. Okay, yes. but Ram Chandra yes. Ramana uh, would initiate. Yes. See, locally they used to initiate. She had her own devotees. Oh. Loki, yeah, Loki. Loki, uh, and uh, and, and uh, Latu Maharaj was working for Ramchandra Dutta only, right? Yes, yes, correct. correct, correct. The, that okay. was a great find. Yeah, 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 yes. Ramchandra Dutta, yes. Okay. Uh, I don't have any question. I was just trying to link up this thing. So yes, I, did yes, not, yes. I did not know that he no. was allowed to initiate. Oh, that is, uh, yeah, that, that is, this was news hmm. to you. So we had a very. Um, as as always, Maharaj, it was um, it was a wonderful session. So much to take in and absorb and retain. And thank you so much for those tips. And we're looking. We really patiently wait for your next class, <laughs> which is on the last Sunday. <laughs> so, uh, Maharaj, uh, your uh, as of now, your schedule is okay. The last class, the fourth Sunday, you're free to for the class uh, for seekers of God. Fourth Sunday is twenty fifth August. Yeah. I will be in Salem attending the Antar Yoga. Fortunately, oh. on that day, half a day Antar Yoga. Oh, the rest of the day I'm free. So I will be attending. From Salem, I will be talking to you. Okay, okay. all right. So, okay, so uh, that day we have uh, 25th, uh, we have uh, River Swami uh, Suhitananda over here in our ashram, and he will be initiating disciples on sun Sunday, okay. that day. Okay. So, so, are we having the class on the day? So uh, we will uh, we will talk to you and I'll put posts yes, in the group accordingly. Okay. 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 And okay. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Dasa Sri Ram Krishna Purnamasya. Durga Durga to everyone. Pranam Maharaj. Pranam Maharaj. Pranam.